Hey everybody, I just bought a new truck and one of the areas of a car that gets the most foot traffic is the door sill and this is a painted surface. You drag your feet across it every time you get in and out of the vehicle and all of the rocks and dirt and road grime that are stuck to the bottom of your shoe scratch up that paint and make it look pretty terrible over time. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install what's called paint protection film. I bought this roll on Amazon. It was really inexpensive and I'll leave a link down in the description below. And it's very easy to install. All you're gonna need is a spray bottle with some soap and water in it, the paint protection film and a pair of scissors and maybe a couple of towels for cleanup. Let's get started. So this is the sill for the driver's side door. And as you can see, it's got all kinds of dirt and dust and grime and junk all over in it. Now there's a lot of opinions about the right way to clean paint on a car and I'm not gonna get into a final polish and getting rid of any swirls or anything like that. I'm just not that concerned about my door sills. I just wanna protect them from big scratches. So to clean this, I'm just gonna use my soapy water. This is a spray bottle that has about 10 drops of regular dish soap in it. And we're gonna use this uh, both for cleaning the door sill and also for installing the film. So I'm just gonna spray this really liberally. We're gonna completely soak it. Let that kind of wash off as much of that dirt as possible. And then I'm gonna very lightly rub it with a rag. This is a microfiber rag that I'm almost not using any pressure at all just to wipe up any surface grime or dust or dirt. Now it's also a good idea to wipe this down with some isopropyl alcohol to remove any waxes or grease or tar or anything else that's stuck there. The problem is, right now, isopropyl alcohol is very hard to come by, so I don't have any, and we're gonna have to just skip that step. Do your best to get this as clean as you can. The cleaner the surface, the better the film is going to adhere. Next, we need to measure the approximate distance that we wanna put the film on, and I think about 24 inches is gonna be good for me. I've seen some people who only do them kind of in like this area or, or maybe just this front part. Um, I'm going to protect as much of the sill as I can. And I don't want to go up the curves at the front or at the back, but I do want to pretty well cover this entire flat area. And that looks like 24 inches. So we'll go cut out a piece of film that's 24 inches long. Okay, I'm going to measure out 24 inches of this film, and then I'm going to just cut it with a pair of sharp scissors. It would be better to cut this with a rolling cutter if you have one or a very sharp razor blade, but my scissors seem to be doing a pretty good job with this film, so I'm just gonna stick with that. And one other quick tip for you, for doing door sills in particular, these sharp corners right here will have a tendency to want to peel up a little bit more easier than if they were rounded over. So I'm gonna just use my scissors, and this doesn't have to be anywhere near perfect. It doesn't have to even look all that great. You're just trying to get rid of that corner and just round it off a little bit. Now, the next thing we need to do is get this completely soaking wet with our water and soap solution. And the reason is because the adhesive on the back of this is very, very strong. And if it folds over and touches itself, you will not get it back off again. But if it's wet, it doesn't stick to itself. So I'm gonna wet the front of it just because I wanna make sure everything is nice and soapy and wet, I'm also gonna spray my hand, both of them, and then I'm gonna to start to peel the backing off of this. Now, because my fingers are wet, they don't stick to the back. See how I can just glide it right over that adhesive? But as I'm pulling this off, any of that adhesive that folds over and sticks to itself is going to immediately be stuck forever unless it's wet. So as you peel off this backing, you wanna completely saturate the back of this. Make sure that adhesive does not touch itself while it's dry. Peel that off carefully and keep everything very, very wet and soapy. Now we're gonna move over to the car and we're going to liberally spray this with the soapy water solution as well. With everything nice and soaking wet, you can lay the film on the paint approximately where you want it to be and start to move it around to position it. Now that water and soap is called a slip solution and it literally lets you slip the film back and forth on the paint like this, see? And I think I want it positioned right about there. Now once you've got it positioned where you want, you need to start working that moisture, all of that water and soap out of the film. And a lot of places will try and sell you applicators and special tools 
that for door sills, I think just get in the way. I found I get the best results when I just use my finger. You can see as I'm pushing a little bit of pressure and I'm working back towards the back of the film here. It's slowly stretching the film out and squeezing out all that soap and water that was underneath the film and squeezing it out the backside. Now I've got a little bubble here. I'm gonna work that towards an edge. There we go. And you just want it to go from the center towards the outside, squeezing out all the bubbles and all of the slip solution. And as you squeeze out that slip solution, the film begins to bond with the paint using its adhesive that's on the back there and then it won't move back and forth anymore. As it dries out, as the slip solution evaporates, your hands start to get a little dry, you'll start to hear noises from your fingers. And if your fingers are starting to get noisy, it's been my experience that you need to put more of the slip solution on top. So you'll see as I'm going here, once I start making noises with my fingers like that, it's time to put on more of the slip solution. Okay, I've pretty well adhered this top face here, and now I'm gonna to start to work around this corner. Again, keeping plenty of this slip solution on here. And the reason I wanna do this is because these complex corners and curves in the body, they all kind of interact with each other. So as I push down in here, it's gonna to wanna to try and pull up, up here. And so you wanna start at the top and work your way down. And you'll go slowly and gently at first, gradually increasing the amount of pressure and always starting from the center and working towards the outer edges. So I finished this corner and I'm starting on this next corner. Now as I'm working this, I wanna to pause to just explain that I am not a professional PPF installer. I'm a do-it-yourselfer. And for those of you who might be professional PPF installers, I'm certain that there are things you're going to be, um, let's say, unhappy about with the way that I'm doing this. But I have found that this has provided me excellent results. And I don't see the need to buy special proprietary solvents or solutions or installation tools. I really have gotten the best results by just being patient, going slowly, and using my fingers. You can see I'm pushing a pretty large bubble here. all the way to the end. All that air that was underneath there, get it all out and then make sure the film is adhering to the paint everywhere. So if you are a do-it-yourselfer and you're the least bit squeamish about whether or not you'll be able to figure out how to install this stuff, or if you've been intimidated in the past thinking it's too complicated and you have to have a professional do it, you really don't. The film itself is really inexpensive and it is very easy to install, especially surfaces like this that are relatively flat and pretty easy to access. Okay, I'm working around this bottom corner, making sure that that is adhering really well and that I'm expressing all of that slip solution. Looks pretty good. I think I've got everything out. So at this point, it's best to just walk away from it for a few minutes and let it start to set up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll give it about 10 minutes or so. You may be tempted to wipe down the surface to get rid of all that soap and water. I would advise that you don't do it because this is what happens. If you say you wanna get rid of all the soap, so we're just gonna spray this down with some plain water and then I'm gonna start wiping this. This rag, even though it's microfiber and even though it has a little bit of soap residue in it from the other wiping that I already did, it's trying to grab the surface of this and pull it and stretch it. And there's still enough slip solution underneath it that you can pull and stretch and move this film. So if you just grab a towel and start wiping on it, you're gonna find that you're stretching it and you're moving it. You're gonna wind up with uh, bubbles getting introduced, corners being pulled up, things like that. So it really is best just to leave it alone. Okay, so now we're just gonna walk away from it. I'll leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next steps. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and this film is looking really good. I don't see any bubbles in it or obvious places that are pulling up. But if you do, all you need to do is push them down and they will start to adhere as things get tackier. The last thing that I like to do is to spray it down with some plain water. And this is just rinsing off all that soap for me. I don't like to let soap dry on my car. 
so I'm just gonna rinse it off. That's why I'm using a lot of water, letting it beat up and run off the bottom of the car. And as I mentioned before, you don't wanna rub back and forth on this yet because it might start to move around on you if you rub really hard. So I'm just gonna blot up this water on top of the film. And this will help me be able to see a little bit better whether there is anything on the film itself that needs to get a little more attention. If we've got any more air bubbles or anything underneath it. Wipe it very gently, almost no surface pressure, just barely dragging the microfiber across it. Now there is one little section with bubbles right here. Now that will eventually work its way out. The bubbles do find their way out of this film. And as I just spread it a little bit, that appears to have disappeared. And that's it, you're done. Wipe up anything else that's still dirty that you wanna kinda clean up, get all the water off of. And I've adjusted the camera settings so you can just make out the edge of that film. But typically, you can't see it at all. We look at the other end, in fact, it's really hard to tell where the film stops, and there it is, and where the paint starts again. From certain angles, you can see it. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've realized now how easy it is to install paint protection film yourself. It's an easy do-it-yourself project. And I recommend anybody who's got a car with paint that they wanna protect down in those sills, go ahead and do it. If you've enjoyed this video, you can hit me with a thumbs up to let me know I've done a good job. And if you've got some feedback for maybe something I could have done better, you can let me know down in the comments. And if you wanna see any more content like this in the future, you can always think about subscribing, but there's no pressure there. And as always, thank you very much for watching.